Attention to KCP's layup. Just watch Draymond Green. We're going to give you a closer look at Draymond Green's ankle here as he will come down on the foot of Kentavious Caldwell Paul. Green would leave the game and would not return with an ankle sprain. Frankly, it wouldn't have made a difference. Watch this here. These are the final seconds of the first half off a miss. Here comes LeBron spotting up and knocking down the three. As the buzzer sounds, the Lakers scored 73 points in the first half last night. They were up 73-44 at the break. Third quarter, the league is 30. LeBron is still on the floor, though he wouldn't be for much longer. Here's a little inbounds for Markeith Morris, the two-hand jam. He scored 13. The lead is 32. Later in the third, LeBron on the wing. He wouldn't play the fourth quarter. He would finish with 19.6 boards. Lakers dominate Golden State last night in what feels like a little bit of a statement game. And look who has gotten up with us early this morning. We got Kendrick Perkins. We got Zach Lowe. Good morning, gentlemen. And Big Perk, before we get to what is going to be the subject of the day, let me just get a quick thought on that game. The Lakers have been struggling. They've been losing last night a, a magnificent performance. How big a deal is that? How important a night was that last night for LeBron's team? Well, it's very important, Green. And let me tell you this. Every chance that LeBron James gets to put the Golden State Warriors and Steph Curry across his lap and give them a spanking, he's going to do just that. But Dennis <laughs> Schroeder has been the key. This guy gives them swagger. Yes, LeBron and Anthony Davis are the best players on the team, but he is the heart and soul of this team. He picks up 94 feet. He brings that defensive tenacity. He, on the offensive end, he is the other guy that can create for himself and create for others. So the biggest thing for the Lakers, not just last night, but, but the game before that, is getting Dennis Schroeder back. He gives them that swagger. So we'll see if they can finally put together a bit of winning streak. But Zach Lowe, there's a reason I wanted you on today, because I got something ready to go on the radio today that would fit perfectly into the Low Post podcast. And this takes us back to Saturday night. If you're watching the game on ABC, Luka Doncic, the day before he turned 22, by the way, put on a huge performance for the Mavericks on Saturday night that left James Harden of the Nets saying this. He never lets anyone speeds him up and he gets what he wants. You know, and that's uh, rare at a, for a guy, you know, at a young age, I think he's, what, 21 years old, um, to be able to dictate the game and control the game like he does. So, uh, obviously, we all know he has a very, very bright future, and um, the Mavs got a special one. So, when Harden said that, Doncic was 21. He turned 22 yesterday. So, Zach Lowe, if you were starting an NBA team right this minute, and you could choose from every single person walking the face of planet Earth to start it with, I would contend that right now the best choice would be Luka Doncic. Zach Lowe, what do you say? Consider age, you just said he's just turned 22. I think the answer is clearly Luka Doncic. And I've said this before on this show when we did Yuka, Luka or Giannis for this question. My favorite thing about Luka is I can get any kind of player to play with him because he can shoot. Ignore his so-so three-point shooting percentages. Those are because he's taking crazy, difficult step-back threes. He can shoot. He can pass. He can play any position almost on the floor except center, I guess. So I can get any kind of player to build around him. The only real competitors at this point are Zion Williamson because what we've seen from Point Zion, which is frankly terrifying, and someone who hasn't been drafted yet, like a Cade Cunningham or somebody like that. I think of everyone in the NBA, when you consider age especially, the answer is clearly Luca. Kendrick Perkins, why are you making those faces at us? Yeah, because I knew that, Greeny, I knew you and Zach Lowe was going to run my blood pressure high with this question, okay? <laughs> and, and, these answers. and look, I'm not taking anything from Luca Doncic. He is a special player. but And he is 22 years old, and I get all that. But he has a lot of miles on him. Let's not forget, he's been playing professional basketball since he had Similac on his breath, okay? When I look at a guy that I'm going to take to start my team today, if I had to draft a guy number one, it would be Joel Embiid. He is the closest thing. He is a 275-pound Akeem Elijah one. Special talent, averaging 30 points and 11 rebounds. And by the way, you talk about youth, he's only 26 years of age. He haven't even reached his prime. And guess what? He's on the verge of probably winning the MVP. The last the last four people to win the MVP, averaging 30 points and through 50% from the field, was Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, and Michael Jordan on back-to-back -back years. So, look, I understand the Luka conversation. I'm not taking anything away from him, but give me Joel and B any day of the week right now. Get him, Zach.
all need to get Perk, but we're talking about a lot of mileage. Joel Embiid is four years older than Luka Doncic with all those scary yeah. foot injuries in the rear view. I mean, I, lo I love JoJo. I said last week I would vote him MVP if, if we had to vote right now. It would be a very, very close race, but he would get my vote. I just think the injuries, I, if they don't disqualify him from this kind of conversation, it comes close because people are scared about what happens down the road. But I, I love JoJo. I think that's a totally fine answer, but I, st I still go Luka. Go ahead, yeah, but, Kendrick. But, yeah, but uh, Zach and, and Green, this is what I have to understand is that Joel and B didn't really start playing basketball until he got to the United States, which was one year before he went to Kansas. So let's not act like it's a lot of mileage on his body. And then he really set out his first two years of his season. So what I'm saying is he still have a lot of basketball left at the age of 26, and he haven't even touched hit his prime yet. He go hit his prime when he turned 27, but he still have about 10 years of playing at this level. We don't know how long Luka Doncic got to play at this level that he's playing at. It's not like he have a, a physical build like a LeBron James. He he actually have a whack body like Kendrick Perkins. And with a whack <laughs> body, I'm going to give you the definition. I'm going to give you the definition of a whack body, Green and Zach Glow. If you could try as hard as you want to stay in the weight room and try to get ripped up, but you'll never get that six pack. It's always gonna be the two situation. I think uh, tonight in the Portland game was two of those instances where we knew that we didn't play our, uh, the, you know, they were capable of defensively. And, uh, you know, we watched a lot of film, broke down some things, be able to get on the floor, get on the floor as well at a private facility, walk through some things, um, go over some things. And I think it's, it's helped us the last two games. You can almost take the same question with AD and I. If you guys just found finally, uh, it's just a find the rhythm of the game. If you find some sense of rhythm there and the guys know where they need to be and where they need to step up around you. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, listen, when you, when you lose a, a mega piece like AD, it's going to take time. Um, both offensively and defensively, how we want to play, and you know, and, and what's going to be our rhythm, and how we get into our rhythm. And I think, uh, you know, over the last few games, we, we've, we've done a good job of trying to, you know, this is where we're going to have the ball. This is how we're going to be effective. This is what we need to run, and uh, and how we're going to, you know, benefit from one another. And I also think that you know, guys know when they're going to play. They know in rotations, things of that nature. So guys are just staying ready. Obviously, you always have to stay ready, but you know, um, you know, guys know their rotations, and and it's, and it's worked out a lot. Worse. Hey. Ryan, you told us that you were going to find a way to do this thing out. You always tweak your game to what your team needs. And the eye test for me last couple of games is you put more physicality and turns defensive plays into offensive opportunities. Has that been the game plan or is that just what uh, has presented itself these last couple of games? It's my job to, uh, like you said, to figure it out. And uh, on both sides of the floor. And um, I think defensively, I've just been a little bit more active. Um, you know, um, you know, trying to be in the right position where um, that had benefited our team, benefit myself. Uh, but I've just been, um, I've just been flying around, and, uh, and it's helped out our team. And everyone's been flying around; it helped me out as well too. So, um, you know, I'm definitely not uh, okay with losing, and um, so it's my job to figure it out what's going to be best for our team. And you know, we've done a good job at the last four games. Okay. LeBron, before game, um, I have to kind of, you know, um, I mean, it's been extremely tough for me. You have to literally like self self motivate yourself every single day. Um, you know, and it's very tough because you're playing every other day, if not back to backs, and it's not much downtime. So, you know, um, you have to like motivate yourself. And, you know, being here in California, like you said, you know, us and SAC and, uh, and the Cliffs and, uh, and GS, um, we don't have the luxury of having fans right now. Um, you know, been watching a lot of games of late, and, you know, it's been 1,500, 2,000, you know, whatever the case may be in the fans, and it gives you an extra boost. Um, so, I'm just waiting, uh, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, I would love for us to, to start have fans here in California, especially here at Staples. Um, you know, it's, it's just adds so much for, for us. Um, and also, also to see our fans too, but um, yeah, it's very challenging. And uh, like I said, you just gotta have, you gotta have the self-discipline and that self-motivation 
um, to know that you go out there and just, you just have to be able to use your teammates, use yourself, and you know, and uh, to, to get the energy. 18 plus years ago, what self motivates you instead of? Um, because at the end of the day, there's some kids out there that are still watching me. Um, they're watching the way I play the amateur basketball. Um, they're reading the narrative of, um, you know, will I be tired or, uh, uh, you know, am I satisfied and things of that nature. Um, and I don't want, I don't want to give uh, them an excuse, no matter the circumstances. Um, you, know, you still go out there, and you know, um, you know, you still go out there and play as hard as you can. Um, give this, give your, you know, life to the game because the game will give it back to you. So um, I, have a, I understand I have a responsibility that's beyond myself uh, when I hit the floor. Hey, last three, Calvin. Hello, LeBron. Um, obviously, you guys played Portland in the playoffs last year, and Golden State's a team that, that you know well, players that you know very well. Defensively, how much has that uh, familiarity that you guys have, perhaps you personally have with those players, played into the performances you had? Um, well, I mean, we've uh, our coaching staff has done a great job putting together a game plan, and we've just tried to execute it. Um, I definitely got a lot of familiarity with. Uh, Obviously, with GS, you know, and, and uh, some of the players that they have on the floor just because of our the last 10 years, obviously. Um, but also, you know, with Portland and the series that we had with them not too long ago. But, you know, for me, I, I kind of um, always try to keep myself, um, you know, familiar with whoever we're playing um, by watching them and, and diving into things that they're going to do and, and just to put my team in position to be successful. Is it kind of fun when some of your study pays off and those anticipation steals, box, things like that, where you? It's what you study, not what you see right in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it puts you in front of, you know, it gives you an opportunity to be ahead of some plays as well. Some of us read and react and not, you know, obviously, but, you know, to be able to be in a position where you can, uh, you know, be there before the, you know, the actual action takes place because you've broke down the film and you've watched it a hell out a lot. Bill Moore? Sounds like some crutches, dude. Hey, over on to your more topic, but um, obviously, you know, 17 straight all starting for you. Do you, um, sorry, um, I'm wondering what you remember about your rookie year when you played the Rookie Challenge in LA and what that first All Star um, weekend experience was like for you? Um, it was incredible. Um, first of all, I'm a kid from Akron, Ohio, and uh, I was in Los Angeles for my first All Star game. Um, and, and that was an incredible, um, you know, moment for myself, for my family um, to be here. Um, obviously, I wanted to be in the All Star game. Um, <laughs> Still kind of hurt me a little bit, but I got over it. Uh, but, I, you know, uh, it's just being here and being around Melo and D-Wade and, and the rest of the guys and, um, you know, just being a part of festivity is something I watched my whole life. You know, I was like, wow, how great it would be to be a part of All-Star Weekend. And for it to be my rookie year, for me to be, um, you know, um, in the rookie, you know, rookie challenge, um, it was something that I probably would never forget. Um, you know, and, I got opportunity to wear some, some dope shoes that night too. Um, you know, Zoom Generation One Beats. Uh, that's one of my favorite uh, sneakers of all time. So I was just like, I was hyped. So uh, it's a long time ago. So long. And that's it's like it's like the mocking drill. It's so long ago. So uh, I'm happy though. <laughs> Last question, Sean. Hey, LeBron. Coach uh, Vogel talks. He went all the way back to the middle of overtime games and now made some fatigue set in for you guys during that four games. How much was a night like tonight needed where, you know, big win and you only have to play for 24 minutes? Um, well, I mean, you take it, for, you know, for what it is, and um, you know, we was able to take care of business. So it allowed, uh, you know, a lot of our big guys. And I played many minutes, and yes, we played a lot of minutes because of so many overtime games we've had this year. But um, you know, you take advantage when you can. You know, um, you prepare as if you got to play 48, and you know you 